Hey everyone, and welcome. Due to high demand, we're going to take a look at the best double DPS 2v2 comps in Shadowlands Season 1. Many players love double DPS comps, as it is simply the most fast-paced way the game can be played. You can win quickly, lose quickly, no healers and tanks to be seen in this video. For each comp we're highlighting, we will give you a general idea of how the comp works. To rank how good all the comps are, we will be using the tier list system. We all know double DPS comps can be extremely fun to play, and some of them can actually be very good as well. However, this tier list will mostly be focused on having fun at lower rating. Other than a few exceptions, double DPS comps often struggle at higher rating versus a coordinated healer DPS team. As always, we'll start off with the S tier. These are the absolute best double DPS comps that you can play right now, with which you can even push high rating. First up, to no one's surprise, Rogue Mage has been one of the most popular comps in World of Warcraft for years, in both 2v2 and 3v3, it's a classic. This comp does well by creating long CC chains. These chains usually consist of a kidney shot into a polymorph or ring of frost on the enemy healer, and then cheap shotting the kill target multiple times to lock them down completely and unload a ton of burst. If done correctly, this will absolutely force out defensive CDs. As Rogue Mage, your goal is to then immediately run to safety, waiting until you're both ready to initiate a CC chain again, eventually coming to a point where the enemy team has no defensives less to use, securing the win. This comp can do very well against classes which are not very tanky and do not have too many defensives to work with. However, when you're playing Rogue and Mage against, let's say, a Holy Paladin and a Warrior, where you have to get them to use their Divine Shield, Trinkets, Blessing of Protection, and so much more, the Rogue Mage quickly runs out of time to force that many CDs and create a kill window in such a short time. Another extremely strong double DPS comp we want to show you is Ret Paladin Sub Rogue. You've probably seen a Ret Paladin throw out some crazy burst during Avenging Wrath. Not only do Ret Paladins have a ton of burst, they also have extremely high healing right now with Word of Glory, allowing you to keep your team alive for quite a long time, even as a double DPS comp. However, Ret Paladins are weak to being kited, often having a hard time connecting to a target during their burst window. That's where Sub Rogues come in. With the crazy amount of control a Sub Rogue can bring with Kidney Shot, Cheap Shot, Blind, Sap, and Shadowy Duel, you can easily CC someone on the enemy team for a very long time. Your main goal as this comp is to force someone on the enemy team to use their Gladiator's Medallion Trinket with a long Sub Rogue CC chain. Once you force Trinket with CC but minimal offensive cooldown usage, you can then completely destroy your target with Avenging Wrath and Shadow Dance. The next comp in the S tier might surprise you a little, but this comp is extremely strong right now. We're talking about Rep Paladin combined with an Enhancement Shaman. Like we mentioned previously, Rep Paladins have extremely high burst and a ton of self-healing with Word of Glory. What if we told you there's another spec, which also has a lot of healing and crazy burst as well? Well, that's Enhancement Shamans. These two specs go extremely well together in 2v2, as they have so much combined healing that they can even survive until high dampening percentages right now. There are several win conditions for this comp. The first one is obviously their insane burst. Enhancement Shamans have some of the highest burst in the game right now with their Ascendance. Not only do they have a lot of damage themselves, but they can also make their teammates do more damage with Wind Fury Totem and Bloodlust. However, just having high burst will not be enough to win at very high ratings. As crazy as it sounds, this comp can even win games by making the enemy healer go out of mana. You can kite extremely well and play defensively using Ghost Wolf and Hand of Freedom, and then play aggressive during short burst windows. You rinse and repeat this process until the enemy team has no defensives left to survive your burst with, or they run out of mana. Next up, the A tier. These double DPS comps are also very strong right now. However, they might require more coordination than the S tier comps and are tougher to play at higher rating. And the first one here is Affliction Warlock combined with a Shadow Priest. Shadow Priests currently have an amazing defensive toolkit, with Greater Fade, Disperse, and Void Shift, making them very hard to kill. On top of having great defensives, they have a lot of self-healing built into their Vampiric Touch and a great healing cooldown, Vampiric Embrace, turning 50% of their damage into healing for their team. So, the Shadow Priest is tanky, the Warlock will be an easy target, right? Not exactly. On top of having Demonic Circle and Demonic Gateway to easily kite the enemy team right now, Warlocks have gotten a new legendary called Sacralash's Dark Strike. This slows any enemy affected by corruption by 50%. 
This comp does very well right now due to the Shadow Priest being hard to kill with their great defensive kit and the Warlock being able to kite a lot. This comp is played by creating CC chains on the enemy with Silence, Fear, and Psychic Horror, eventually rotting the enemy team down. However, the weakness of this comp is melees with high mobility who can easily connect to the kiting Warlock, making it hard to play offensive and eventually land a kill. Another very strong double TPS right now is MM Hunter combined with Rep Paladin. This comp does very well right now due to having high burst windows and good CC chains. Not only do you have nice crowd control chains, but you can also kite and survive for an extremely long time. The new Hunter Legendary, which reduces the CD of your Fain death to 15 seconds, makes the Hunter a hard target to kill. On top of that, Rep Paladins have a ton of healing right now, and Hand of Freedom of course. Your goal as this comp is usually to stun the enemy healer, followed up by a Hunter Trap, and then unloading a bunch of burst onto the kill target. It is also important to play very defensive in between your major setups. This comp does struggle a bit against targets that are hard to kite, but if you play well and do your best to kite between your setups, you can definitely make this one work. The next comp in the A tier is Balanced Druid paired with a sub rogue. We're sure you've seen some crazy Balanced Druid bursts lately. Convoke the Spirits, the Night Fae ability, can unload multiple Star Surges and Full Moons in a very short time, creating some of the craziest bursts in the game. However, the issue with Convoke the Spirits is that it is very easy to interrupt an LOS. Once again, that's where sub rogues come in. With their great stun lockdown, you can create very high burst windows where your balanced druid can unload multiple star surges on someone during a stun. Balanced druids also have great healing right now using Heart of the Wild. Your goal as this comp is to create these high burst windows while cloning defensively and the rogue going for restealths in between setups. The weakness of this one is facing classes with very high damage output, who can easily kill the balanced druid before they're able to kite and get away. The last comp we think falls under the A tier is Elemental Shaman paired with a Ret Paladin. This comp has a lot of similarities with the S tier comp Enhancement Ret. Likewise, the Elemental version of this comp has crazy self-healing and can survive for a very long time. However, Elementals do not have as much burst packed into a short window like Enhancement Shamans do and a little less self-healing, which is also easier to interrupt. They do share the same win condition of trying to force enemy defensives with using their Avenging Wrath and Stormkeeper, and kiting for long periods of time outside of those burst windows, eventually coming to a point where the enemy has no mana or CDs left. Next, the B tier. Even though the following comps can do quite well, they require a lot of coordination and might struggle to be successful in the current meta. First up, we've got Shadow Priest Sub Rogue. Like we mentioned earlier, priests have a great defensive toolkit, and rogues have a lot of CC. Combining these two and the great self-healing from Priests allows this comp to survive quite long and create deadly setups. Your goal as this comp will be to create those setups as often as possible with Cheap Shot, Kidney Shot, Blind, Sap, Fear, and Mind Bomb, and as always, playing defensively in between setups. Even though this comp can do extremely well against teams which do not have too much damage for the Shadow Priest, a Warrior or Windwalker, for example, can absolutely destroy this comp before they get proper setups going, making it hard to be successful versus these popular specs. The second comp here in the B tier that we'll be taking a look at is Feral Shadow. This comp has great defensive toolkit to easily survive enemy burst with. On top of that, Ferals have insane heals right now with Heart of the Wild. Combining these two specializations makes it very hard to kill the Shadow Priest. Your goal as this comp is to use your small CC windows with Silence, Psychic Horror, and Druid stuns to then single out a target and unload a bunch of burst on them. A big ferocious bite crit into a Shadow Word death can easily blow someone up. The weakness of this comp are enemy comps with a lot of defensives available to counter your burst, and comps which have high uptime on your priest, making it hard for the feral to provide enough off heals to outheal that incoming damage. The last comp in the B tier is Windwalker paired up with an Enhancement Shaman. For sure most of you know that Windwalkers are extremely strong right now, both in 2v2 and 3v3. However, even though Windwalkers have some of the best burst and consistent damage in the game, they are quite squishy and take a lot of damage from the enemy team. On top of that, they do not have the greatest self-healing, making them relatively weak in double DPS 2v2 if you do not finish the game fast enough. This comp does well by having some of the fastest 2v2 games that you can think of. Combining the Enhancement Shaman Burst during Ascendance with Bloodlust on both of these specs provides some of the craziest bursts in the game. As this comp, you want to incap one target and then use all of your bursts during a stun on the kill target. If you do not kill during this high burst window, make sure you immediately run for safety as the monk doesn't have much self-healing. 
The goal is to then repeat this process and blow someone on the enemy team up. The weakness of this comp is specs with immunities for your burst windows, as you won't be able to survive too long. Your burst is where it's all at. After showing you the S, A, and B tier, up next is the unranked tier. The classes currently placed in the unranked tier are DKs, Warriors, and Demon Hunters. The reason these classes don't do very well right now is due to having low self-healing and barely any CC. This makes it hard to survive versus the much more popular healer DPS comps right now. Of course, you can still win games with these classes in double DPS comps. However, you would have to essentially win the game within the first minute or so, as lack of healing on these classes makes it very hard to survive long enough to reset and create another burst window. Being limited to one window and having a quick one minute game is completely fine at lower rating. However, this would not be viable for pushing high rating on the 2v2 ladder. These classes all work well with healers and protection paladins in 2v2, but as this is strictly a double DPS tier list, these specs are not the way to go if you're looking to climb the ladder. All right, that's it for this tier list. We hope that you enjoyed and found yourself the best double DPS comp to be successful on the ladder with. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content coming up, and we'll see you next time.